What's up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius back at it again with some Mushoku Tensei. Today we're doing Season 2, Episode 2. This one is called The Forest in the Dead of Night. Remember, if you guys want to watch this episode of the full uncut version or early access to the other shows, exclusive reactions, vote on the polls, all that, check out that Patreon. Links are down below, like always. Make sure you guys subscribe, click that notifications bell, check out all the social medias, all that jazz. Let's hop right on in today's episode. Uh, Mushoku Tensei, Season 2, Episode 2. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Getting right into it. It's been a few months. He's getting his workouts in. He's building his reputation, doing his jobs. He's still worshipping the panties. Is this the new opening for season two? I've always loved how Mushoku always plays the opening during like actual setup shots. And you know, it's a very different style of opening. So is this the opening? Because this is kind of a bop. I'm fucking with the vibes of the song so far. It gives me the vibes it's supposed to give for season two, you know? Adventurous, still hopeful, positive, doing the right thing. You know? So she's the one asking us if we want in. That's already improvements from last time. Counter arrow, name of their party. <laughs> Even though we're making steps with Sarah, she's still Sarah. Got the rest of Counter Arrow. I actually really like them, you know? That's the thing about Mushoku Tensei. Characters that you meet that seem like they could be normally tertiary characters that you'll never meet again could totally come back and meet, and meet again multiple times. That's why I love the world building. Human Demon War. This place looks insane. This looks like something I would see in like a dwarf kingdom and reincarnated as a slime. One of those hunter-gatherer missions, you know? Relatively easy for an A-class job, I agree. It just all depends on yeah, the dangerousness is that we're in Snowdrake territory, you know? Uh, I forget her name. Kirishima... Ki oh, it, it does look like her. She's like the old demon empress, right? Okay. Oh, we have multiple drakes. And drakes, from my understanding of fantasy lore, are like one step or two ste steps under a dragon, you know? You got like wyverns, drakes, and then it comes to dragons and shit, you know? Correct me if I'm wrong. Did they all leave? Are we all on our own right now? All want to get some safety? Think of Roxy. <laughs> Shout out Sarah. They didn't leave us. They were getting a more advantageous position to use some support. I like Timothy. Okay. He seems to be a, a fire specialist uh, mage too. He loves his fire spells. I agree. We need some Rudy slaying right here. Oh, it's the guy from the other party who came in and was going to kill the Drakes. I'm hoping he's cool with us. Because we don't need any enemies. We'll cool. We're cool with you killing the Drakes. We'll just take some of their scales. A win win. I have a feeling he's going to be a dick. Okay, so it's not the cave we're in. Right? Yeah, Tim, you're the one who just got punched. So the two different areas are linked, causing a little bit of a miscommunication. Okay, at least he apologized for the miscommunication. Natural misunderstanding, it happens. And I like Timothy for being very understanding and reasonable about this. We just want some of their scales. Like I said, this can be a win-win for everyone. Something tells me this ended too happily for Mushoku Tensei, though. This feels like Konosuba with how happy like it actually is right now. So they are the toughest party in the guild. You know what? I could kind of see Paul being sort of douchey, conceited like that. Oh, and he is drunk. I'm hoping we stay 
on friendly terms. He's trying to play it off. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little deep when it comes to Rudy. This got kind of deep kind of fast. Zero to a hundred. This went from a very friendly conversation to now, uh, yeah. Well, that turned uh, horribly awkward very, very fast. He still has that force to grin on. Like, he, there was a very much certain extent of what this guy was saying that was very accurate about Rudy, you know? Rudy does, he does, he is acting as if he feels like no one has a shittier life than him, you know? He doesn't, you know? And I don't want to pause it to get into that, but it has to do with his resolve, his depression, you know? Like, I would, I'm not obviously a, psychiatrist or anything a license myself but i would easily have in the last few episodes have classified uh rudy as depressed and when it comes to that you have this feeling as if you know you're isolated in your own world and getting a new perspective of the challenges that other people are going through if they are worse than yours can give you some sort of uplifting uplifting perspective on your own circumstances but I don't, it's very tough it's very weird it's very circumstantial it's very interesting i'm curious that's why that's one thing i love about the show is that they touch on topics like that you know because mental resilience and mental strength in and of itself is something that needs to be talked about more these days it's something that's never black and white you know and it's always so deep what happened to amir and sarah I know I was just talking about how this show doesn't care about our characters and our attachments to them. And we could see them more than we think. We can lose them faster than we think. But I was just really liking Sarah. Are we being serious? It has to do with what what's his name said. Half-assing everything, you know? Mm, and Eris turning her back on him. He doesn't want to do that to anyone else he knows. Wow. That boy got devoured. Literally in a pile of bones. Took whatever remnants of him that we can. Or that's her earring. Good reactions to use your own magic to knock you out of the way to save yourself from that tree. Sarah is still alive. She's being sucked in by whatever vines are, are here. Okay, animation is looking so crisp. What is this tree? Rudy's a legend. Shout out Rudy. So we were able to get away from the Whomping Willow, whatever the fuck that was. What is this, Harry Potter? She's just now realizing she's almost naked. Turned and reached for him. I wonder was she gonna give him a hug, thank him. Hmm. Shout out to Rudy. Going out of his way. <laughs> That's kind of a bar. He would definitely still be in that depressed slump if it weren't for this party, counter arrow. That's the motherly instincts in her, you know. Sarah's standing up for us. Defending Rudy. Aw. Shout out, Timothy. You know him especially, but the entire party felt 
horrible about leaving Sarah and, you know, not being able to protect Mimir. You guys have helped more than you know. Really. Like I said, we wouldn't be in our, uh, we'd still be depressed if it weren't for you guys. You guys saved us, I saved you. See, like, I know I said I was shocked last episode about Counter Arrow, and maybe they could be a future reoccurring character, but now I'm almost convinced. I want to see them the rest of the season, damn near. I know I'm not going to, but I would love to. I We're, we're definitely friends at this point. Look at her. Yeah, you had a good night's work. Still need a day. <laughs> what a way to end an episode, you know? Well, we were making some great progress for Rudy. Wow. Well, talk about an episode. I was shocked more. I mean, I guess Mamir and the whole Sarah thing at the end did kill the vibe immensely. But I'm shocked how surprisingly upbeat and happy this episode was. But it was needed after the depressingness of the end of last season and the first episode, you know, like he definitely needed to go through this little mini journey and his character development and his mentality. And now I have much higher hopes that he's going to end off in a place that's much better. We have the squad that I'm thoroughly enjoying. R.I.P. Mamir officially, but I love Timothy, Patrice, uh, Sarah, Suzanne, thoroughly enjoying them so far. The new guy from the new party who's like the strong party of the guild, a little questionable on him right now. I got to learn more about him. When uh, Rudy said he kind of gives Paul vibes early on, I kind of can see that. Like he, he could, Paul could have been kind of like that. But I need to see Fitz and Ariel and Piomon again, which one of you guys in the comments did let me know that we actually do see Fitz and Ariel in episode 14 of season one. Like you see Sylphie. I don't know why I'm calling her Fitz, but you do see Sylphie uh, during episode when Soros is getting beheaded. You just see them like straight up clear as day. And I was like, holy shit, that's an Easter egg I never even noticed. But super excited for the season. Super excited to continue. The animation, fantastic. Character development and mature philosophical plot points fantastic i'm loving this so far hopefully you guys are as well if you are please leave a like on the video let me know your thoughts down below don't forget to subscribe click that bell all that jazz have a wonderful day dapper squad thank you all peace out